Hello, my name is Noam Brown. This is joint work with my advisor, Tomas Sandholm, and I'm going to talk about our paper, Safe and Nested Subgame Solving for Imperfect Information Games, which won Best Paper at NIPS 2017. Now, this paper focuses on imperfect information games. These are not games like Go or Chess, but rather games like Poker, or more generally, any strategic interaction that could be modeled as an imperfect information game. For example, security interactions or negotiations. And I see this line of research as being particularly relevant to bring AI into the real world, because most real-world strategic interactions involve some amount of hidden information. Now, when it comes to these games, poker has served as the primary benchmark challenge uh, for a very long time. And earlier this year, our AI Libratus defeated four of the world's best heads-up no-limit Texas Hold'em poker players in a 120,000 hand match that lasted 20 days. There is a $200,000 prize pool divided among the pros based on their performance to incentivize strong play, and the AI defeated all of them by a decisive margin. And this is particularly significant because No Limit Texas Hold'em is the most popular variant of poker in the world. Now this paper goes into the details of some of the techniques that were used to defeat these humans for the first time. Now, when I talk to people about this line of research and about this competition, one of the questions I often get is, well, why was poker hard in the first place? Why couldn't we use the techniques that were introduced in AlphaGo or in Deep Blue uh, to, and apply them directly to poker? And uh, there's a few reasons for this, but one of the main reasons is that all of the techniques that were used in perfect information games like Go or Chess rely on this uh, special feature of perfect information games, this unique property, where when you take some action and your opponent takes some action and you find yourself in a particular subgame, you can forget about all the other situations that you did not find yourself in. Those are all irrelevant. And in fact, even the sequence of actions that got you to this point are now irrelevant as well. The only thing that's relevant for determining the optimal strategy from this point on is this particular subgame that you found yourself in, the current state and all the states that can be reached from this point on. And in imperfect information games, this is actually not true. In imperfect information games, you take some action, your opponent takes some action, you find yourself in a particular subgame, but then it turns out that some other subgame that you're not in, and in fact you cannot even reach from this point on, can affect what the optimal strategy is for the subgame that you are in. And this is kind of a counterintuitive idea, but we actually demonstrate this in the paper. So what this means is that when you're making a decision uh, in an imperfect, imperfect information game, you have to consider the entire strategy for the game as a whole, rather than just the subgame that you're in. So for imperfect information games, we need a very different approach. And in the past, the, te the technique that was used was to simply solve the entire game up front. A strategy was pre-computed for the entire game as a whole. Uh, and so for example, Limit Texas Hold'em, a smaller variant of poker that was solved in 2015, they simply pre-computed a strategy for the entire game. But No Limit Texas Hold'em is simply way too big for this. So what we do with No Limit Texas Hold'em, uh, uh, what we did on the broadest and more generally the technique that we introduced in this paper is called nested subgame solving. Here we come up with an approximation for how to play for the entire game. But then during actual play in real time, when we find ourselves in a particular subgame, we come up with a much better strategy for that particular subgame while fitting that strategy within the overarching blueprint that we've already computed. And we re repeat this process as we go down the game tree. When we find ourselves in another subgame, we again find a much better strategy for that particular subgame while fitting it within the overarching blueprint that we've already computed. And we show in this paper that this leads to far better performance compared to past techniques and against past bots. Now we'll be presenting this paper on Tuesday, December 5th, and we'll actually be demonstrating the bot and invite people to play against it on that evening. So if you are attending NIPS, we encourage you to attend and come by. Thank you.